Uh, Stuart, now you've had a bit of time to reflect, where does that climax to the test at Headingley rank in terms of great test moments? The greatest for, my, for me. Um, I don't think I've ever re-watched moments in a test match like I have done this week. I've got to stop doing it, really. It's a week on now. But, um, yeah, the, the drama of it is unrivaled. Uh, Stokesy hitting sixes that were just clearing fielders, um, appeals, drop catches, missed run outs. You know, it, was, it had everything that uh, made viewing, being involved in the game, uh, horrific. But uh, watching it back, knowing the result, was a little bit more enjoyable. I'm guessing you've had a chance to speak to Jimmy Anderson since the news comes out. He won't play a part in the rest of the Ashes. What sort of move is he in? How's he feeling? He's obviously very disappointed. He's put his heart and soul into to getting back uh, to full fitness. Obviously, it was early June, he, he hurt his calf originally and um, got back fit for the first game. And, and that didn't quite work out how he wanted. And he's done everything he possibly could. I've seen him running, bowling, bowled 20 odd overs in a day. Um, so he's, he's frustrated, obviously. Uh, he's going to have a period of time of ifs and buts. What if I did this? Could I have done that? Um, but also, it's important for him to have a bit of a break now and, and look forward to future challenges. I think he's obvi obviously going to be very disappointed for a period of time. And I. I had in my mind that it was almost written in the stars that he'd come back and open the bowling at the, the James Anderson end um, and bowl us to victory. But that's, that's not going to happen, but um, he's, he's obviously got a, a lot of cricket left in him um, and he'll, he'll be desperate to get that calf right. Because that's a long-winded calf injury, isn't it? That's, that's two, three months worth of a calf niggle and he'll, he'll want to get rid of that. And a certain Australian batsman is back for this test match. What's your plan to get Steve Smith out? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we've not bowled at him since since Lords. He's had a period of time without batting in the middle, which is a bonus for us. In the fact that every every time a batsman looks in great rhythm, a period of time out of being in the middle um, could affect them. Um, but he's obviously a world class batsman. He'll he'll be very ready for the conditions he'll he'll face here at, at Old Trafford. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I think there's been a little bit of. Uh, to and fro between him and Joffre, hasn't there? Uh, so Joffre will be excited to, to continue that battle. Um, but yeah, it's great to have him back. It's, uh, no one wants to see anyone miss cricket through uh, head injuries and he would have been very disappointed not to play at, at Headingley and very hungry to, to come back into two crucial test matches. Stuart Lackridge from Bean Sports. Do you sense there's been a real shift in momentum with what's happened over the last 10 days or so? Yeah, I do, of course, because uh, Australia would have 99% felt like they were regaining the ashes uh, with 70 runs needed at, at Headingley. And uh, we had Stokes and Leach's partnership was one of the, the greatest partnerships English cricket's seen. Australia had a really poor hour, um, and they'll probably reflect on that and, and think they got quite a few things wrong in that. So obviously the momentum of that test match shifted and, and with that the series. So we're, we've come here enjoying what happened last week but know that, that that's gone but also not forgetting about that because we can take a lot of energy, a lot of spirit from, from the way we stayed in that, that test match throughout. Yes, we had a, a terrible first innings batting display of 60 odd um, but to... to keep going and fight our way back into that game and the mindset that we did that with you know constantly I can genuinely say we never felt out of that game we never felt out of the battle um, and, and the language within changing room was always positive and how we're going to get the result and that's exactly the same mindset that we need here at Old Trafford we're going to get the same level of support as we have done it uh, as we did do at Headingley we know that the the atmosphere will be brilliant here um, I heard that day five tickets flew out on uh, on Monday so that's the the influence that the team can have on the country as well so we know we're going to turn up here on Wednesday with a crowd fully behind us and and that sort of momentum can can definitely drag us through and the little break that you've had in between the two test matches do you see that as a, as a positive thing for the team brilliant brilliant yeah we we're, we're talking about that at breakfast this morning just how fresh everyone felt how energetic everyone looked and 
I know there's there's always those times you think, oh, I'll get in the nets, get in the nets. But actually, in cricket, it, it's a sport that when you can have three or four d days away, you've come back so excited to train and so excited to to put that fight and effort in. Um, and yeah, I mean, we had a, an appearance this morning as a team, so we all had breakfast together at eight thirty, and uh, there was a lot of smiles, a lot of energy, a lot of a lot of chat, and still reliving moments from last week, um, but also how enjoyable it's been to be able to go home, get the barbecue on, uh, relax, see the family and, and get ready for this week. Rory, then Paul. Just in terms of, I mean, after the 67 all out, Josh Hazel would say, oh, I mean, we're opening up a few scars and leaving, leaving a few on them. Do you think there'll be any scars in the, in the Australian dressing room from the, sort of the manner of that defeat? I think I think it's the language that they'll have been using would be let's forget about it quickly and move on, but any loss always hangs over you for a period of time. But a loss that uh, you feel like you could definitely have won and should have won uh, is obviously going to stay with you. The, um, England did a lot of brilliant things in that Test match, and Australia did a lot of brilliant things. Um, and I don't think I've ever played in an Ashes series that's been as closely matched uh, man for man as this this series the teams are so close and you can see that with uh, the sort of punches being thrown from both sides and how we're soaking it up I think it's a fascinating series to be involved in because you're turning up each morning as a player desperate for a good day but you just don't know what's going to happen um, it's been exciting for me as a a fan of fast bowling to see some of the bowling on display in this series I know that the, the batting units will come under pressure at times for for some of the dismissals, but the the fast bowling in this series has been a pleasure to watch. It's 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 great to see um, Test cricket thriving like that is, and the theatre that you you maybe I'm a bit old school, but the theatre that you get from watching and enjoying the bowling that's gone on in this series uh, is special. So we have to enjoy that, um, but know that as a, we're in this series at one one, and we've still got a lot more to give as a team, which is a, a, an exciting place to be. That, that bowling, so obviously we know how much of a loss Jimmy will be, but with you and Joffer opening up, Bancroft's been dropped, it sounds like maybe Harris might go and there'll be another change at the top. Does that tell you, with those changes happening, that you, you guys are sort of winning that battle with the new ball? Who might come in? This is well, news to me. Top. Oh, really? Well, Smith's got to come back in and now the going to stay. So. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, as an opening bowler, you, you've got to set the tone. And you do a lot of research into who you're going to come up against, look at their strengths and weaknesses. And the way that both sides of bowled with the new ball has been an impre uh, impressive. And it's, you almost don't want players' personnel to change because when you're getting people out, you want to keep bowling and keep that sort of momentum and uh, rhythm going. Um, but, but also, when change comes, it's not an easy position to come in in England with the ashes on the line to come and open the batting and set the tone. So um, the bowling's been great, uh, but there's obviously opportunities here at Old Trafford for, for batsmen to score. I think this will be a, a pretty true pitch. Normally it's a pretty good cricket pitch uh, to play. Um, but we just need to keep doing our thing with that new ball because we're, we're creating chances, we're creating pressure, and actually we're not going for too many runs. I think um, it's a tricky thing with opening the batting in England. Uh, you do have to leave very well, and there's that scope, well, why don't you just go out and play more attackingly? Well, actually, the new ball in England is, is a tough place to bat, and if you go and try and drive it off length with three slips in the gully, it's a dangerous. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a good position for the opening bowlers to be, but uh, like anything in international cricket, it's the next game that counts, and uh, we'll have to adjust to the conditions that Old Trafford poses. Paul, John? Stuart, you got hit quite badly hit by Bruno and Aaron a few years ago. But does it affect you psychologically? And for someone like Steve Smith coming back after a bad hit, were you as a bowling unit test him out with the short ball consciously, you know, after, after someone's gone through something like that? I mean, it was a nasty hit, wasn't it? And um, I, it, the first thing is it's great that Steve's OK and, and coming back into test cricket. But test cricket's a brutal sport, and it's a, a sport that countries are going hell for leather against each other. and. I'm sure when, when Steve comes in, Joffre will be in Rooty's ear wanting the ball. There's no doubt about that. Um, and that's, that's the intensity that Test cricket brings. That's the theatre that we were just talking about, really. Um, 
I might be stood at mid on, but I'll be excited for when Joffre asks for that ball and Steve comes in because uh, it's it was a really tasty bit of cricket at Lords. I mean, Smith obviously on 70 or 80 playing beautifully. Joffre went from 84 mile an hour to 95 and um, he was really charging in. So that sort of cricket is awesome to watch on the telly and from the stands, but when you stood at mid on, it's, it's pretty special. So hopefully we can have a, a battle like that again. Um, I mean, the dream is that someone just nicks him off first ball and Joffrey doesn't get to bowl at him, but uh, he, he doesn't average 60-odd for, for nothing. So um, there will be a period in this game that those two come, come together again, and I'm glad, touch wood, I'll be on the pitch to, to view it. Um, well, he's got a bit more skill than me with the bat, so it probably won't, won't affect him. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not... I've n I don't have ever played in a series where so many people have been hit in the head. I, I can't even describe why. I mean, obviously, both sets of fast bowlers are bowling well and looking a good rhythm. Um, the pitches have maybe played slightly untrue, so they're, they're a bit too paced, we call it, in the change room. So one will skid through and one will slow down. But, um, yeah, I mean, I... I it feels like the doctors are running out every 10 overs, doesn't it? But um, that's part of test cricket. It's, you bowl a bouncer not to hit someone in the head. You bowl a bouncer to manoeuvre footwork and, and change momentum of, of body weight. Um, but your best bouncer is directed over leg stump and at the head, unfortunately. So if, it's, uh, if it hits, fortunately, the, the helmets and stuff have, have got really good and, and much better now. John, George, and then we'll finish uh, with Will. Uh, over the course of the series so far, you've dismissed one of the four times, and you could probably have better of that sort of internal battle. Uh, how do you describe, describe that battle and, and, and your relationship with one? It's been a great battle so far. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I had to look quite, co quite closely pre series because uh, I'd say that Warner, had, up until this series, had the better of me, really. And I'd always focused on his outside edge, thinking that um, running the ball across him uh, would bring in the slips. But actually, the bloke's got incredible hand-eye coordination. So if you miss your line at all, it seems to disappear through the covers. So I had a change of mindset in this series a little bit to try and bring the stumps into play more to him, um, to look to nip it back onto to off stump. And then if it holds its line, it brings the outside edge in. And that actually limits the scoring options slightly. Um, and also the, the pitches have been in, in our favour with the new ball, so I don't want to take too much credit in the fact that I've outthought or anything, in the fact that it's just been a really good time to bowl with that new ball. Uh, but like, like we, we said earlier, the test cricket always moves on and this pitch will be very different to how Lords played or how um, Headingley played. Uh, and actually credit to to Warner at Headingley that morning was probably as good as time to bowl as you'll ever get in test cricket. You know, cloudy, heavy, swinging, seeming. And he, he, he might have played a miss a lot, but he, he got through that period and got a, a pretty crucial 50. So um, he'll, he'll take confidence from that. He'll, he changed his mindset slightly, became that sort of bullish character again, a bit more niggly uh, in the field and, and on the pitch, which... Me? Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, during the game? Uh, we've not had we've not had any crosswords in this series. Um, but uh, he he, you could tell he changed his mindset to be a bit more in the face of the opposition, and and that suits him better as a cricketer. He played really well, um, and he took good catches at slip. Um, so we'll expect the same again at Old Trafford. We'll expect him to come out and and be that niggly character on the field that, that he so often is and uh, we need to, to combat that and, and dismiss him quickly because we know that if we get Warner in Warner with that new ball um, we can expose Smith to a harder ball and that's what we want. Okay, so just like, also you said that Jimmy's got a lot more good left in him so you would expect to be playing with him in New Zealand and South Africa? I hope so yeah I mean he's having a bit of a break now um, to give the, the calf a bit of time because he's tried everything. You know, I've seen him running, bowling, doing absolutely everything that you feel he should be to play an Ashes Test, and then the calf doesn't pull up well enough. Um, so I think he's realistic. At 37, your body takes longer to heal, doesn't it? So 
he's got a period of time now that he can can let it rest. But I know, well, I don't know for certain. But I, from the conversations I've had, he's looking at the winter and getting fit and and wanting to to be on that trip. And um, it's quite exciting with this Test Championship. It, it doesn't feel like an Ashes series is the new cycle anymore. It feels like that World Test Championship final is a new cycle. So um, I know a few of the older players are looking more towards that than the Ashes series. <laughs> George, move on to the boat. We're in out of time here. Um, how, has the way you're bowling uh, broadened your horizons? How long do you think you can um, I mean, this is the best I've bowled for three or four years, I think. I've, I, I actually see it as fate a little bit that I missed out a bit this winter, so I had time to sit back and actually try and change a few things technically. I talked about shortening my run-up, which has, has really helped my tempo and kept my stride pattern short. Um, I think I'm bowling as, as quick as I have done for a while, uh, which probably surprises me more than most, but I think that's just a rhythm thing and a tempo thing. I feel um, like, obviously I've bowled quite a lot in these four test matches this summer so far, but I feel fresh. I feel so excited and fresh. And I spoke to Ashley Giles at the start of the season and knew that there was a lot of cricket coming at the end and we had to get that balance right between playing enough cricket to feel good, but also that I'm in a position come September where I'm hungry, excited and, and and haven't got niggles and touch words like it's worked out really well I said that feeling in breakfast this morning was awesome everyone was just it's, it's what early September and everyone was excited everyone was buzzing to be meeting up again for a test match and that's at 33 that's a great place to be because I'm I'm hungry to to continue playing and um, there's some some good cricket coming our way uh, but you know I, I also know that you can't look too far, far ahead in international cricket um, but I feel like I have reinvented myself slightly as a bowler in the last six, seven weeks on the international stage and uh, that's come through a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of drive, a lot of hunger to get better and that's an encouraging sign at 33 that I'm not sort of tailing off, I'm actually wanting to, to continue and, and try and win this Test Championship, more importantly the Ashes in two weeks. Last one, Will. Yeah, I mean, a lot of good things in that second innings. A, the mindset the players were in and the language we were talking that was always, how are we winning this game? Uh, the solution-based mindset over just saying problems and L Ruti led that. Ruti and Dennis' partnership was awesome. You know, and that gave the whole group belief that actually, um, Yes, there's good balls in this pitch, but if you get in, you can score quickly at Headingley and consistently over 280, 300 can get chased at Headingley. But if, the, I mean, the whole group will take a lot of energy and strength from the way those guys batted and the way uh, Stokesy batted. You don't need to be 30 off 30 in Test cricket. If you take your time and you stick to your strengths early, batting gets easier. And uh, that was so evident with the innings that were successful at Headingley and uh, I mean what was it four maidens day four to start the day we didn't panic we just settled in we didn't take play a loose drive we didn't try and whack one over the top we just played and runs come when bowlers get tired um, and I said at lunch that as soon as you get over 20 overs in test cricket as a bowler you're writing checks your body can't catch so you might be saying yeah let's charge in and bowl six bounces but they're not as effective as when you're bowling your first of the day so you take bowlers in deep into, into uh, innings and you can hurt them. And that was a great uh, template for how we, sh we won that game, but how we test cricket should be played. Um, and we can take huge momentum and pleasure out of the way we did that and take it into Old Trafford and, and the Oval. These two might be the best two pitches of the series to bat on. Let's make hay. <laughs>